Dr. My name is Ishi Kalsi. I'm a lawyer, practicing advocate of the High Court of Kenya in Nairobi. I have my own law firm called Ishi Kalsi and Company Advocates. And uh, together with Legal Help NRI, we are going to try and sort out legal issues uh, for any NRIs living abroad. Um, Monisha, I would just like to have a short um, a few sessions and a few questions for you um, regarding NRIs in India. Uh, one of them is, in your experience, how many NRIs have legal issues in India? She, good question and interesting because any person who's living abroad and has a property back home in India, whether he's acquired it or maybe owned by his parents, has a dispute back home in India. Even if it necessarily does not have to be a dispute. What it is, is that they need resolution or they need, a, uh, they need resolving of certain issues. Uh, certain Sometimes it's just bank accounts people have where they need transfer of bank accounts from the parents' name to the children's name. At times parents have died, they have inheritance where the parents have properties back home and children cannot travel to India to get the properties transferred in their name. So those are the kind of issues we deal with. Those are issues. But then when you talk about legal disputes, there are legal disputes as well for people who are non-resident Indians, which are mostly 70% people who are living abroad end up having a dispute back home in India. Yes, and that's interesting, Monisha, because one of the many questions I'm getting is about uh, squatter rights in India. What happens when um, somebody has property back home in India and they, f they go and find after several years that they are squatters living on that property. How difficult or, or easy is it to get those squatters out? Yeah, it is um, squatters right of course it's a very popular term used across the world. It is not only here in India but across the world where a person who has left property and has never uh, looked at the property back home. They have third parties or uh, third parties who come here try taking illegal possession or trespassing the property. Now when we talk about squatters right that can easily be dealt with. It's something we are majorly doing for people who are non-resident Indians, people who left way back in the 60s or the 70s and have had properties which were given to caretakers and now are claiming right over the property as owners. So it is not a difficult thing. It is a tedious process, I may say, but it can be easily resolved for people if they have the right documentation and we take the right steps in getting it resolved. Okay, and one of the other things is um, I do a, a lot of wills, um, drafting and preparation of wills in Kenya. A lot of people have property and bank accounts back in India and how possible is it to register wills in a jurisdiction, um, in the jurisdiction of India, when the will is drafted in Kenya? Is it possible for them to access their bank accounts and property rights? The registration of the will is not important at all in India. If a will is made in Kenya, that can be executed. Suppose Mr. Singh makes a will and he dies. He has made a will in Kenya and he's died. That will can be executed in India, provided he has mentioned his issue, his properties for India in that will. We can use the will here. It becomes the registration of will only makes it easier for people to uh, prove the will because it is more of for as a matter of evidence that registered will can be proved. But if you have two witnesses on the will and even one of the witnesses steps into the court or the witness box, the will is a valid document here. What you can do for your clients who are there and who need help uh, for uh, a will for their properties in India, you can get a will made and of course get it attested by the Indian High Commission in Nairobi. Instead of, because now with COVID, it's very difficult for people to travel. So in that eventuality, yes, issue, you can get the will uh, stamped by the Indian High Commission. Okay. Excellent, Manisha. I think we've covered a few topics and uh, I am looking forward to our webinar on the 5th of July.